was a little boy and he had a little toy and his name was Noah Bear. Ah, ah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Donald and welcome to the channel. I've been creating easy meals that make your life a little bit easier in the kitchen for over 10 years now. But this channel is all about a little slice of our family life and home cooking. I'll be showing you how to get the most out of your kitchen to next level your dishes for maximum flavor. So stick around, hit that subscribe button, and let's get cooking. Now, when it comes to quick fix dinners, I always go to spaghetti and meatballs. And I don't necessarily think of it as a really easy dish, but I have, over the years, simplified it down to make it super simple and still really flavorful. So this is my cheats polpette with bucatini and a really gorgeous buttery tomato sauce. Very simple to make. It does require one, two, maybe three pans. This is uh, proof that I can make dinner in about 15 minutes. I've got Noah has just arrived home from preschool. Um, we've got spaghetti and meatballs that are gonna happen in, in I hope, about 15 minutes. Uh, first job is to get your water on to boil. So I have a little trick that I do when I'm making pasta, which is fill up your uh, pan maybe like a quarter of the way through. And in the time it takes for a kettle to boil, this is gonna come up to temperature and you're gonna have a big pot of boiling water in the time you need it. So let's fill our kettle up. Let's get this on the boil. I'm also gonna get the heat on uh, one of my pans, maybe this smaller pan, because I wanna toast off some fennel. Fennel is one of the key ingredients to our sausage meatballs here and will make all the difference to uh, a really, really flavorful meatball. So the kettle is on. We're gonna get that onto the boil and we're gonna grab up some fennel seeds. So, these beauties, oh, these beauties, they've got that really gorgeous aniseed hit and fennel and sausage and pork really work well together. So about a tablespoon of fennel seeds going in here. They literally need a minute. Now this is the sort of thing that I do and I always forget and then they burn, so I have to keep my eye on that. Now, other ingredients we're gonna need are some tomatoes. I've got loads and loads of tomatoes. We've got some spinach, I've got some butter. Now, whenever I am in the supermarket and I see pork sausage, I always put it in the trolley because it means that I have something that's a great cheat ingredient and it's a really great building block for a lot of flavorful dishes. I make a pork ragu with it or like a, a sausage ragu with it with the fennel seeds as well. So this is gonna form the basis of our meatballs. To this, we're gonna add an egg and a little bit of breadcrumbs. This is not essential, especially with pork sausage, but it, you will get a more consistent and even um, sort of meatball. I'm just gonna give the spices a quick toss. The moment you know they're done is when they be kind of become sort of like fragrant and you'll smell them and you don't want to get them to the point where they're like smoking and um, burnt. So uh, keep your eye on them. We've got some breadcrumbs, we've got some bucatini. That fennel <laughs> is nearly done and I'm gonna bring that over too. Now, you don't have to do this with your fennel seeds, but I promise you it will make the world of difference. Taking hot fennel seeds that have been introduced to a little bit of heat They've come electric, they've come alive in the pan, and we're gonna pop them into a pestle and mortar. So, fennel seeds in, we're gonna take that pan while it's still hot, and dump in our tomatoes. I gave these a quick wash as soon as they came in from the supermarket. You don't have to cut them or anything. We're gonna pop them in with a good, generous amount of butter. The butter and the oil we're gonna add here is really gonna give you gorgeous flavor. So a generous bit of butter goes in, and to this, we're gonna grab up some oil. So come over here. We're gonna take a good glug of oil going in here, about a tablespoon or two. Season it up with some black pepper, a little bit of salt, and my last ingredient, always to bring the flavor of tomatoes alive, is to get some thyme in there as well. This is the this is the dregs of my the herbs that I have in the fridge. I don't I can't grow decent herbs in Los Angeles, so if I ever have them, I always try and keep as much as I can. So I've got sage here, but I'm not going to add that in, and I'm not bothering at all to pick these off the stem because I want to pick them out later. So. Butter, oil, salt, pepper, thyme, bring this into the heat and we're gonna make magic. While that's cracking away, we are gonna get on with these meatballs. So we've our egg, we've our breadcrumbs, we've got our fennel seeds which are now hot. They've been toasted, they're flavorful. Get in there and give it a good mash. Now it's little steps like this that are gonna change how your home cooked dishes taste. Little tiny little hits of spice and flavor that you can eke out are a real winner. So about a tablespoon, something sizzling over in the back so let's give that a quick toss. The butter's melting, the oil's going wild, so let's turn that to a sort of a medium heat and let that cook away. Back over here, we've got our fennel, we've got our pork sausage. We're gonna pop that straight in. This is actually sort of like a hot Italian sausage. So just have a look at that. There's loads of beautiful fat in there and fat is flavor when it comes to meatballs. And fat is also gonna give you really tender meatballs. So don't skimp on the fat when it comes to the meatballs. Right, pork sausage in, let's give the hands a quick wash. Now, while that is cooking out, we wanna give it a little bit of spice, so about a teaspoon of chili flakes. 
if you want to. Now, if you don't want it hot and you don't want it spicy, don't add this in. You can leave it and it'll cook beautifully. But a teaspoon of this will go a long way to giving you a little bit of a pep in your step. So, nice little toss. The butter's melting, the thyme is going on, and this is gonna basically cook down onto those cherry tomatoes are sweet, caramelized, and almost like bursting at the seams. So, we're actually gonna use some of these chili flakes. You only want about a teaspoon. To this, we've got our egg. We've got about 50 grams of breadcrumbs, about two tablespoons of breadcrumbs going in here. And I nearly forgot, I want to add some garlic to both the meatballs and to the sauce. So, out with a knife and with, with something like this, I probably want about like two, three cloves. We'll do us both in the meatballs and in the sauce. Now, if you have a little more time, take a little bit of sea salt and mash this with the back of the knife on the board. But if you don't and you're trying to just crack through, you can finely chop it as finely as you can go in a short amount of time. I don't want you spending hours with this. So a little bit of that goes into our meatballs and the rest goes in with our cherry tomatoes which you can see are starting to kind of give us a little bit of action. They're reducing down, they're coating in that gorgeous sauce. So let's get on with our meatballs. I'm gonna mix this up, not by hand, just for the ease of life. Okay, our meat mix is looking good. We're gonna form that into balls. I have my kettle boiled, so let's get our boiling pot of water on the roll. To this, we're gonna add a little bit of salt. It needs to taste like the sea. Not that I suggest drinking seawater, but it does need to be heavily salted. While that's coming back up to the boil in like a minute or so, we're gonna get the heat on our pan in here. We're gonna add a little drop of oil. The pot is up to a nice rolling boil at this point. Our olive oil is at a medium high heat. We've got our cherry tomatoes absolutely looking gorgeous. I wanna get our spoon in there and just show you what we're dealing with here. Look at the magic. Two punnets of tomatoes and you've got this beautiful velvety tomato sauce. Okay, this is looking pretty good. We're in a good place. Uh, let's form our meatballs, let's get them fried off. I say meatballs, but they're kind of like polpette. They're just like tiny little bite-sized balls. I don't know if I can call them balls because they're certainly not looking like balls. <laughs> they're much more free-form balls here. I suggest you keep your balls free-form throughout the year, enjoy. Okay, we've got our, our last meatball and um, now this is, you want me to? <laughs> Put the lion on? Yeah. This is what happens when you're making a uh, meatball recipe. Uh, you want to put the lion toy on? Will Papa sing you a song? There was a little boy and he had a little toy and his name was Noah Bear. Ah, ah. <laughs> uh, right, we have bucatini, which is that sort of thick spaghetti with the little hole in the middle. Uh, we have our meatballs looking good. Do you, know, you want a light? Are we going to put some pasta on? You want to put the pasta in? Okay. <laughs> it's very hard to do the cooking show and have a, a child in the kitchen at the same time, but sometimes you just have to keep going. I'll put, you want to sit up there? Okay, you sit up and you keep watching what's going on, okay? And if, if anyone does anything wrong, you let me know. Now, uh, we're going to put our pasta on and make sure this is cooked out. So a full pack of pasta goes in. Now we have to, are we going to cook the meatballs? Okay, we put them in. Put them in the hot oil. Okay, so let's get them in. So all I'm looking for is for these to kind of turn a nice golden brown on both sides and for them to be cooked all the way through. And essentially then you have bucatini, you have that beautiful cherry tomato sauce and you have all these gorgeous meatballs or palpette or free form meatballs, whatever you're gonna call these yourself. You want one of these? You have to cook them first. Venta. Right, we have good things happening right now. We have a child who needs some food. We've got beautiful frying off here. We're looking for these to go golden brown. I might add a little bit of tomato passata into this just to kind of loosen out our sauce. Our bucatini is gonna be cooked and then we have dinner to the table, my friend. We've got the dinner to the table. Let's go. <laughs> now I did say like these are not these are not like perfectly rotund meatballs. These are kind of scraggy and good looking meatballs. They're homemade and I love that about them. We have our bucatini, which is just about cooked. I'm going to check and see where we're at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's exactly where we need to be. I'm going to whack off the heat on that. Our meatballs are pretty much where they need to be. And just look at this, because this is what's happened after about 15 minutes of those tomatoes melting into the butter and the oil. Give it a good mix through. I'm gonna pop that straight in over all those beautiful meatballs. Hello. Okay, we are in a good place. Those tomatoes are in there and they're just mixing through and they're sizzling away. So there's a few little things we need to do to finish. I'm gonna drain off our bucatini. Uh, it's finished cooking at this point now. Where is my bleeding colander? Something, something happens in my kitchen. 
when the colander is not where it's meant to be. This is what causes regular arguments in our house. The colander is not put back where it needs to be. But we won't get into that right. Okay, Sophie, let's, let's save this for later. Let's uh, save it for the counsellor. <laughs> save it for the marriage counsellor. Uh, now that we've found the colander, everything is calm in the kitchen and dinner's nearly ready. So we're going to drain off our bucatini and actually for ease of stirring things through, I'm going to pop the bucatini straight back into the pot. And I always hold back a little spaghetti because there's always a need for some later. And Noah has a tendency of wanting uh, spaghetti without the sauce sometimes. So I always hold back a little bit just in case. Beautiful pot of bucatini. Now, let's talk about these meatballs. I always suggest <coughs> that it is imperative that you mix through some of the sauce. Rather than dumping everything in there, take up like good dollops of that sauce. You might get a few meatballs in there and that's okay. But you want to mix through the sauce before you add the meatballs. And so the meatballs should be kind of added at the end. And I like the idea that you get a lot of, of saucy spaghetti or bucatini and then you can top it with all the meatballs on top. It means that you get sort of even distribution of your meatballs when you go to serve it up. This little idea I've been doing for a while now and it really helps to make sure that you have a saucy sort of spaghetti that you get to serve the meatballs on top of. And a little tip at this point now is to add in your basil. I'm gonna add some basil here just to really add some sort of fresh aromatics. Now, if you wanna keep the leaves whole or you wanna chop them, it's up to you. But I like the idea that the heat is gonna melt down some of these basil leaves so that you have a nice hit of basil as you eat through this. Okay, this is looking gorgeous. I wanna add in a touch of olive oil. Not only for the flavor, but for its kind of lusciousness that it adds to pasta as well. So about a teaspoon or so is going in. Give that all a mix through. So now you're in business. You have pasta that is not dry looking. You have meatballs that are cooked. You have everything that you can serve to the table and is good to go. So I'm gonna go for a bit of a pasta twirl. <laughs> and I can, and almost on cue, eat pasta? Yeah. Do you want some pasta? Yeah. Are you gonna try with Papa? This, this is also what happens when it comes to dinner time. <laughs> it's very hot. Are you hungry? <laughs> this child has the appetite of a horse. I don't know what happened in the womb. Now, everything's very hot, so be careful. So we're going to take up some meatballs yeah. and some tomatoes. Yeah. And you want some of that on top? Yeah. Before this gets devoured, I want you to get in there and have a look and see how beautiful it looks. We're going to add in some basil leaves. Can you pick off the basil leaves for Papa? Can you do the basil leaves? Okay, you do the basil leaves. Now pick them off. Make them look pretty, Noah. Make them look pretty. No. A little bit of Parmesan cheese over the top, even though Noah doesn't care. He just wants... Look, look at what's going on over here. This is ridiculous. Hey, are you going to wait till we put some Parmesan cheese on top? Yeah. A little bit of Parmesan. And my friends, there you go. A beautiful plate of pasta. Do you like it? He's literally sucking the, uh, he's sucking the sauce off the pasta. I am gonna try it. So I want a little bit of the meatball, I want a bit of the pasta, and it's all about that sauce. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. You go the extra mile by toasting off the fennel seeds and bashing them, and it really is what sings through this entire dish. I know it's only like a teaspoon to a tablespoon, but it makes all the difference to the meatballs as you dive into them. That pasta sauce is incredible. Even if you just wanted to make that and dip gorgeous bits of sourdough toast in, you are, <laughs> you are in absolute heaven. As you can tell, he's going in for more. We're gonna sign it off here. Uh, try the recipe, it's on my website. We'll leave all the details in the box below. Until then, we'll see you soon, goodbye. Let's go get dinner for Mama and for Oliver. Let's go. Oliver. Oliver.